It's time to address the rumours once and for all. Is there gold in the Otway Ranges in Victoria? According to old reports from Trove, there have been reported finds of gold here. Years ago, I searched the area and found reports of an alluvial mine that operated there. One single alluvial mine. Unfortunately, I scoured the internet and I can't find it anymore, and I can't for the life of me remember where it was to my complete and utter disappointment. It's likely that any gold found here was transported to the location rather than being shed from it. So let's take a look into why that is the case and what makes the Otway so different from the gold saturated areas that lie to the north of it. I'll explain the reason regarding why economic amounts of gold is unlikely to exist here by diving into the geological construction of the region and explaining the difference between it and gold rich areas. There's one single location that mentions an occurrence of gold here in the Mount Mackenzie area, and it's a placer deposit, meaning it was transported and deposited here by a river at some point in time. Note the word occurrence has been used though. An occurrence refers to the presence of gold in a particular area, but it does not necessarily imply that the gold is present in quantities that are economically viable or practical to mine. The majority of Australia's gold deposits come from hard rock systems associated with intense geological activity including the collision of tectonic plates, volcanic arcs, and subduction zones. These processes create the heat and pressure necessary to generate the fluids that carry and deposit gold in significant concentrations. But the Otway Ranges, geologically speaking, are quite different from these gold-rich areas, and it's also very young in terms of its geological age. The Otway Ranges were formed primarily through a process known as rifting, the separation of tectonic plates. Around 100 million years ago, during the breakup of the ancient supercontinent Gondwana, the Australian plate began to separate from the Antarctic plate. This rifting caused the land between the two plates to sink, forming large sedimentary basins that were filled with material eroded from the surrounding highlands. Over millions of years, these sediments compacted and became the rocks that now form the Otway Ranges. This rift zone is actually still active and is located between Australia and Antarctica in present day. The modern rift zone is the mature phase of this tectonic process, responsible for the continuing divergence of the Australian and Antarctic plates. While rift zones can sometimes create environments where hydrothermal fluids circulate and deposit minerals like gold, the rifting that formed the Otway Ranges was relatively passive compared to the types of tectonic activity that typically produce significant gold deposits. There were no massive volcanic eruptions or major subduction processes that occurred in the Otway since its formation which are the conditions that are commonly associated with large gold-bearing mineral systems. Additionally, when geologists look for gold, they often examine the types of rocks present in the region. Gold is commonly associated with certain types of volcanic rocks, as well as rocks that have undergone metamorphism. But the rocks in the Otways are primarily sedimentary, meaning they were laid down in layers over time by rivers, seas and wind, rather than being formed by volcanic or metamorphic processes. Sedimentary rocks can sometimes host placer gold deposits if gold-bearing rocks upstream have eroded and deposited their gold in riverbeds or alluvial plains, and this is likely what happened to the Otways in very limited quantities. You see, prior to the formation of the Otways, the area was a shallow sea, and the gold-bearing regions to the north of it used to flow out and empty into the southern section of Australia. During the early Cretaceous period, between 100 and 140 million years ago, global sea levels were significantly higher than they are today. They were between 100 to 200 metres, which is 330 to 660 feet higher, meaning the land bridge that connected mainland Australia to Tasmania was submerged back then, much like it is today. So as a result of gold-bearing rivers flowing out into the shallow sea, any gold present would likely be dispersed in low concentrations within the sedimentary rocks. This process could explain minor occurrences of placer gold found in the region, but it's unlikely to have led to economically significant gold deposits. Mount Mackenzie, on the other hand, is located right near to a river system, which is the most likely reason for the gold occurrence that is found here. One thing to note is that prior to recent volcanic activity, which covered much of the western plains in basaltic lava, the same gold-bearing Ordovician Age quartz rocks and gold-rich rivers that exist in areas like Ballarat likely stretched from areas such as Rokewood and the Pitfield Plains all the way down to Colac, which would have been close or right on the edge of the former coastline prior to the uplift of the Otway Ranges. I'll be making a video on this untouched gold field soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you want to see that. There is some historical evidence of prospecting and small scale gold mining in the Otways. In the late 19th century, gold fever swept through much of Victoria, 
and prospectors explored almost every corner of the state, including the Otway Ranges. Reports from the time indicate that some small amounts of placer gold were discovered in the area, particularly in the western parts of the Otways, near the Jellybrand River. However, these findings were far from significant, and no major gold rush ever took place in the region. But look at this article from a man who claims that he found gold 25 years prior to the date that he wrote this. He stated he led a party that found gold in payable amounts, and he wanted the government to fund a new expedition. There was a rebuttal to his request which questions his motives, and they wrote if gold was as good as he describes, why wait for the government to fund it, instead of venturing out there and claiming the area and its supposed riches for himself. And that's a very good point. Unsurprisingly, this venture was never undertaken. Official geological surveys conducted in the years following these prospecting efforts concluded that the Otways simply lacked the types of geological conditions necessary to form large gold deposits. The sedimentary rocks that make up most of the region were not the right type to host gold in substantial quantities, and the absence of significant volcanic or hydrothermal activity meant that the fluids required to concentrate gold in hard rock deposits were never present in this region. Some modern prospectors have taken an interest in the Otways, speculating that there might be undiscovered gold deposits hidden deep in the valleys or along the riverbeds. However, these efforts have yielded little in the way of significant finds. Occasional reports of small gold nuggets or flakes in the Otways are not uncommon, but these are likely to be isolated incidents rather than evidence of a broader gold-bearing system. But it's not only gold that has been a sketchy topic in this region. A company was formed to mine platinum in the Otways and was met with the same disappointing results as any gold endeavour. Ore was supplied that had a great deal of platinum in it. After the mine was opened, no platinum was found. Only traces of gold, silver and coal were found. No one knows where the guy got his ore from, but it appears like he was a dodgy fella. To quote the article, we are assured that this alleged platinum mine is one of the greatest, if not the greatest frost that has ever been known in the history of Australian mining. In conclusion, while there may be some minor occurrences of placer gold in the Otway Ranges, the geological history of the region suggests that significant gold deposits are highly unlikely to be found. The rifting that formed the Otways did not create the conditions necessary for large-scale gold mineralization, and the sedimentary rocks that dominate the landscape are not conducive to hosting gold in meaningful quantities. Historical attempts to find gold in the region were largely unsuccessful, and modern prospecting efforts have not revealed any major discoveries. So if you're looking for gold in Victoria, you're better off heading to the more famous gold fields. But before we end this video, let's conclude with another old story from the late 1800s. This was published in May of 1884, and it's very very hard to read, but I'll try my best to say what was said. When I arrived at the diggings, all the miners had left, and the place was totally deserted. The two miners already alluded to I met on their way back to Cobden. They were sadly dispirited. I can't make out the next word, but it's something like, and they recommended strongly against the originators of the reports that had brought them from Melbourne to try their luck in the Otway diggings. From numerous inquiries I made, and from information I retrieved from reliable sources, I believe that gold has been found, both at the place I visited and in other localities in the Otway Forest, but not in anything like payable quantities. So to answer the question of whether or not gold is at the Otways, the answer is yes, small amounts, but not enough to make it worth your while. Focus on areas that have a setting more akin to what is required geologically to form good gold deposits. As for the Otways, it's likely that either ancient rivers carried gold here, or there are small deposits from when it was a shallow seafloor that had been caught up in minimal amounts and exposed and eroded in sedimentary rock layers. Hopefully this video saves you some time in your prospecting journey. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.